Hey everyone, welcome to A Better Perspective, a weekly show that we started a couple of weeks ago about highlighting different perspectives about current events. Uh, information changes things, and the more information that we have, the better informed that we can be about the situations and the things in our lives. And we hope that these conversations help you make better decisions um, as um, as you live your life. So tonight we're very excited to have Adrian Hildebrand in with us. And Adrian is actually a finance coach and she's been very successful. She has a very successful podcast, Faith in Finance. You can check out that um you can check out that podcast wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Apple or Spotify or where, wherever you listen to your podcast. So make sure that you tune into that. Adrian, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for coming on this evening. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I love what you're doing. So keep it up. Well, thank you. Now, what is the story behind your passion for uh, finance coaching and why faith in finance? Yeah, so it's actually kind of interesting because I always tell young, I mean, I am a young person, but I tell younger people that um, it's okay to not have your whole life figured out, right? It's okay to sort of just follow after the Lord and see what he has for your life. And so one thing that I've always been really good about, I guess, is and at the time I didn't realize it was good. It's just staying open and saying, okay, Lord, you know, we sing these songs. You, If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Um, and sometimes we're so like in our, as I mentioned, in our heads about what we feel called to do and, um, and whatever that we don't let God kind of move. And I use the example sometimes of, you know, you may be called to be a pastor at five years old, but you're going to not be a pastor at five years old. You're going to have to grow up and go through some things. Right. So, um, what started this specifically is, um, I actually started a business on credit cards to about nearly three years ago now, and which was not a good idea because I didn't really have a plan to pay it all off. I, mm. I thought, Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be all good, whatever. But I didn't really have a plan. And so I remember hearing about Dave Ramsey as a kid, actually, yeah. it's kind of crazy because I don't remember anything. And I remembered watching Dave Ramsey as a child. And I was like, um, oh, wow. Okay. I need to watch this guy. And this is a very shortened answer for this, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. I was like, I need to look into this guy and we need to pay off this debt. I was a newlywed. We ended up both losing our regular jobs, our nine to five jobs. So we had nothing. We were in a, oh my gosh, a pit. And uh, that very first year we found ourselves in debt um, on paper to the IRS, we made about $30,000, which truthfully, we didn't make much more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, we did, we were youth pastors at the time. So we did get a little bit of a, um, a housing allowance. So of course that's not taxable income. So I like to input that there, but all that to say, um, we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a ton of money at all. Mm -hmm. And through that course of time, I just, we just were like, we need to get rid of this debt. Um, and I really felt like it was my debt and it was because even though my husband, um, we were married, I, I, it was my fault that we were in the debt. And so we became debt free. And then I started realizing how many people didn't know basic financial principles. It was shocking to me that in the country that we live in, we were, we have access to literally anything and people don't have basic financial knowledge. And so it's just been a progression of things. And I wanted to start a podcast just to kind of share information and share our story. And it's really progressed. And as we were talking beforehand, um, said, I said, you know, you have to start somewhere. You just got to do something. And it kind of has transitioned into a business, which is now what I do now is, uh, I coach people and kind of help them, uh, do things. I was in banking, And I didn't want to do the financial advisor route uh, Mm -hmm. specifically because I have a heart to teach in an educator's heart. Whereas a lot of times being an advisor is very much sales and that's fine. But I wanted to be able to say, have more of a base level um, approach to things. And so that's kind of why I'm here now and doing what I'm doing. And I'm still uh, learning and growing, And but it's been a lot of fun. It's been a good time. <laughs> that's cool. I loved, I love your title, Faith in Finance, and how you were able to merge those together. And we are definitely major Dave Ramsey fans around our house. 
Yeah. The 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 um the phrase "What would Dave do?" gets tossed around quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> Uh, which I saw that um, you actually went on his show for a little while, or, or there was a picture of you on Facebook. Yeah, we just went and met him because we were going to Knoxville actually just for fun, and my husband took me by the studio, and so we got to meet Dave, and he really was the impetus, you know, for what mm-hmm. changed our life. So it was just really cool to see him, and that this multimillionaire was wearing like sneakers and a zip up hoodie. It was just fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. So That's it was cool. great. <laughs> Yeah, and and just for anybody else listening out there who, if you if you need somebody to just kind of punch you in the gut a little bit about finances, you go to the Dave Ramsey Show podcast, and you will get just that. And yes, <laughs> you'll you'll get it in order. Get it in order. Yes. <laughs> All right, so right now, where the United States and the world is really in a crisis, um, in a pandemic, this COVID nineteen has taken the the forefront of everybody's mind as well as finances uh, economists are suggesting that 20 percent of the workforce is going to be unemployed due to this virus um, so for those who are unemployed or those who are looking at unemployed what are some of the first steps that they could take financially at this time yeah so i do want to say you know the principles that I teach about personal finance can be applied all the time. Of course, right now in a, in a crisis, people are more open to hearing about it, I guess. I don't say that belittling, but I just say, you know, these are things that we, we want to implement um, before a crisis, during a crisis, after a crisis all the time, because at any point in time, we could lose our jobs, right? At any point, none of us are secure truthfully. Right. And so I just want to say that, that, not to like fear monger, I guess, and not to make people feel, but just that, you know, um, life can happen. And so the way that I teach about personal finance and Dave and a lot of other people is that, um, the first thing that happens if you become unemployed period is I suggest, um, making sure your four walls are covered and Dave, he kind of, I think coined that, but the four walls are your housing, your transportation, uh, utilities and food because you have to have get a car to get to work, right? You have to, right. if, if you're going to go get a job, you know, if you have to, or to go find a new job, um, mm-hmm. you have to have a place to live. You have to have food, you have to have water and electricity. So that those are the first things that you want to make sure you can take care of. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing is, is if you are unemployed, uh, you need to c- try to cut expenses back as much as you can yeah. right now. Uh, it's not forever. But just right now, what is the bare minimum uh, you can use to get forward? And what's really cool is that I was talking about this earlier, too, is that humanity, we're very adaptable. And we're like, I mean, obviously, God gave us brilliant, amazing minds. And so we can, um, in the face of adversity, we really can uh, do a lot. We can be resilient and um, we have tenacity and all these things. And so, yes, it's hard. Yes, it it stinks if you're unemployed. I totally get that. But, um, you know, make sure your four walls are covered. Try to cut back expenses as much as you can. Make it a game. I don't know. So there's a thing I do that's called no spend challenges. And what that looks like is for um, a couple days at a time, or some people do like 30 days at a time, Mm -hmm. they get creative and they're like, okay, can I not spend any extra money for 30 days? And that's a really fun way to kind of get creative, right? So it's not... I don't want people to panic. I know that it's like hard. It's easier said than done, but I've been there and panic and fear makes us make really bad choices. And so it's just like, we got to look objectively at the situation and say, okay. So another thing too, is like, especially right now in the crisis specifically in COVID, this coronavirus, um, there are a lot of companies hiring for even shortened amounts of time because they know that people are going to go back to their regular jobs eventually. Mm. Um, some people are being let off because of the virus and some people are just, you know, obviously restaurants are going to open back up again, right? Or things like that are going to open back up again. So, um, I would also encourage you to try to find a, a, uh, not a part-time you want to work as much as you can if you're unemployed, but I mean something that can work for a shortened length of time. And so specifically with this virus, I've seen a lot of companies who are expediting even hiring processes. So, Mm. you know, try to get 
um, a job as much as you can. And also uh, hoard basically as much cash, cash as you can. And when I say cash, I don't necessarily mean like go to the bank and withdraw cash. I mean, have it liquid, which means in an account that is easily accessible. So oftentimes in our retirement accounts, those aren't as easily accessible as they would be in a savings account or a checking account or something. You can have, I don't know, if you want to have $1,000 in a drawer at your house, okay, that's fine. But just try to hoard so much, uh, as much cash as possible. Now with this new CARES Act too, um, many people are, are going to be able to qualify for the stimulus for individuals. Now um, I'll send you a link of, there's, you know, tiers of kind of who qualifies for how much and whatever. Um, yes, the stimulus package has been put in place to help stimulate the economy right. means they want you to spend money, right? But we don't know how long this thing is going to last. Truthfully, we just don't know. And I don't say that to be fearful, but just, again, think ahead, right? So when you do get stimulus money, if you get a stimulus, uh, if you get a stimulus check, uh, whatever that looks like in your bank account, um, think about, okay, can I help, how long can I make this last, right? So buy what you need, pay your bill, you know, pay your four wall bills um, and make sure those are covered. But how, how, how much can you stretch a dollar, right? Um, how, how much can you do that? Another thing with the stimulus and um, the CARES Act is that they're implementing a lot of, you know, um, 0% interest for things and yada, yada, yada. So depending on everybody's situation, there are some things in place that can help. But again, as I mentioned earlier, these things can happen at any point in time and we want to be as much prepared as we can. So those are some things we can do right now, but also thinking in the future too, after all this is over, um, implementing the good habits and to make sure saving is a thing. And um, you may realize, hey, I didn't really miss some of those things we were spending money on, you know? Um, so those kind of things, making things a game, but I know that was a long, uh, version of what I was trying to say, but, um, yeah. Now you mentioned, um, in one of your podcasts, you talked about, and you just mentioned one of them, making savings a game. Is there any other creative tips or anything that you can do that, or that people can do at home, uh, to, uh, really get creative with their savings? What can they yeah. do? Yeah. So you can get creative with your savings and then also get creative a little bit with your income. We live in the gig economy, as they say, and there are side hustles galore. As I mentioned earlier, you know, DoorDash, um, Instacart, uh, these, these places that kind of deliver things, even a lot of the grocery stores right now. Yes, it's not maybe as much as some people are making at their normal job and if they lose their job, but it's something, right? Mm -hmm. It's something. Um, and truthfully, some people like to just be out and about. So yeah. getting a little interim job, you know, a job that can help you um, get kind of through this time. So there are hundreds of side gigs available. And truthfully, there are a lot of people that still um, have to work, right? So mm -hmm. think about our uh, nurses, our frontline people they may need someone to help them watch their dog or watch mm. their children because everything's closing down. Mm. So think about things like that. Can I maybe say, okay, I actually know this nurse at my church or whatever, and, and she has a dog and I know she usually takes it to doggy daycare and I think it's closed. Can I reach out and maybe strike a deal with, with them? Those kind of things, getting really creative. And as I mentioned earlier, humans are very uh, adaptable and we can be, and we're very, um, resilient in the face of adversity. So, um, you know, I actually am a freelance writer too. If someone's a really good writer, maybe they were, uh, I, I've seen a couple of teachers who were on contract, um, just using this as an example, um, or they were somehow an hourly teacher. I'm not sure how that all worked, but they lost their jobs. And so um, generally teachers are really good writers because they're, they're teaching, right? So maybe find um, some freelance writing gigs on um, websites like Fiverr, or uh, I have to think of a couple other ones, but just getting really creative. What are the skills? What, what do I have? What can I do with what I have? You know, um, so those sort of things, just getting really creative about your income during this time, because truthfully, we're all in this together. You know, this yeah. isn't affecting just one person. It's affecting everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, you you kind of mentioned the stimulus uh, and I'd kind of like to go back to it. You said uh, earlier in the conversation that you read the thing. You <laughs> 
I, I, I read through the initial bill before yeah. it was completely passed, um, mostly because I'm just really interested in how that all came about, which we won't get into all that. But, um, and now that it's been passed and approved and yada, yada, some things have changed. But I did uh, look through m the relevant pieces to most of, you know, the people that I, my clients and stuff like that. But yeah, it was kind of, I just really looked through the original document. I haven't read it since it's been officially mm -hmm. passed. So they changed some of the language mm -hmm. in it and everything like that. But yeah. Is there anything that you've heard that could help somebody that outside, people know that they're potentially getting a check um, or however they filed their taxes, direct deposit or whatever. Is there any other information or anything that could help churches or businesses or anything of that nature? Yes. So this is actually one of the most, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a really good package for almost everyone at kind of every level. There's very few stipulations about certain things. So even if you're a freelancer, if you um, already are used to working on tips, there are certain things in set in the stimulus that can help you. For churches, there's going to be essentially grants given to churches. It's essentially a forgivable loan, which is like a grant, right? So there's a bunch of different things. Um, also, a couple other things are if you have a federal student loan, and I know that student loans are huge in this country. Um, if you have a federal student loan, which means that it was a loan given to you, of course, by the government and not a private entity, um, they are essentially waiving interest for or I think it's six months until September. Um, now, one thing that is cool about this is because some of the people listening, a lot of them may still have their jobs because a lot of companies are allowing them to work from home, whatever. If you have a student loan and it's a federal loan and you can pay, continue to pay your amounts, what's amazing about that is all of that money is going to go to the principal because there's mm. no interest on it which effectively helps you pay off your debt that much more quickly. So, um, now, a couple of the things that I do want to point out is, yes, a lot of these mortgage companies are offering um, deferrals and things like that, but just read the fine print from whoever your mortgage company is if you need to do this. These are things like, if you can still pay your mortgage, I really believe like you should. You know, As Christians, if you have the money and the means to do it, I really think you probably should. You know, that's, you're the pastor here, but um <laughs> Just as a more, you know what I mean? If sure. you have the means, you should, you should pay unto Caesar what it's Caesar's, right? So um, there are many different things. And there's a couple of articles on like Forbes and the Washington Post that kind of outline the um, most pertinent information if you don't want to be a nerd and read through the whole thing <laughs> like me. But uh, yeah, so those are a couple of things. But again, it, this is kind of a time, like I said, if you can pay some of those loans, um, a lot of them are going to like 0% interest. Oh, uh, that's a huge deal. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so that's a lot of, if your regular, pay, if your regular student loan payment is $300, all of that is going to go toward the principal, which effectively lowers your, your, you yeah. know, your um, debt that much yeah. more quickly. So um, just be mindful that there are fine lines too and fine print. Oh, that's what I was trying to say. The mortgage, like if you, for whatever reason, can't pay your mortgage and you need to defer it, there's a couple different things. Just get the fine print from your mortgage company because they may charge like fees. Like, I, I don't know. So just get fine print and get things in writing um, mm. to protect yourself too. So just know that going into it, um, not everything is just like a free for all, you know? So we are still dealing with the government, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So let, I guess exit the scene here from the COVID-19 and <laughs> uh, finances in general. Eventually, we're going to get back to normal. I, I do. Yes. This is kind of a pause. We're going to get back to normal. What can people do or, or how should people change their habits if from the normal American, what, what should we do to be not normal and to change our habits? Sure. So one of the things I, I guess, preach about a lot is something I call value aligned spending. And I don't just mean with our money, but our time, our resources, our abilities, our gift, our gifts. I'm not one that's like deprivation, but right <laughs> now there is a little bit of a, obviously a crisis happening. So you may have to 
cuts some things back, but in general, moving forward, um, you know, I don't think, I think every good and perfect gift is, is from the Lord. And so if there are things that you enjoy doing and you enjoy spending money on perfect, perfectly fine. Right. But if you start looking at what you are spending and how you're even spending your time, mm-hmm. um, because really, you know, they say time is money. Mm-hmm. If you live in a house that's very, very expensive and you don't, for like no reason and you don't really care about it and you maybe could downsize or whatever, whatever that looks like. Um, you, you may say, you know what, we could probably live in a little bit of a a cheaper home because we would rather go on a family vacation every year. And in order for us to do that, I'm having to work 10 times more, you know, or 10 hours more a week in order for us to just pay for our house. Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking about those things in terms of what is it that you actually value, um, Ramit Sethi says, he's another personal finance dude. He says, basically spend extravagantly on the things that you love, but cut costs mercilessly on the things you don't care about. Um, he like, this is the man that set, buys like cashmere pants because he can, but you know what he doesn't do? Go out to eat. He like never goes out to eat. So it's, everything's an exchange. Everything's a choice. And so moving forward, every time you go to spend money or even spend time, say, does this align with my core beliefs and my core values? And then that automatically, rather than the deprivation, it makes us look at the whole picture, right? Um, you know, I, I, this year I'm doing what I'm calling an intentional spend year. I'm doing it as kind of a practice. So I guess this was a good year to do it, but I vowed not to buy any clothes this year. And that's really hard for me because I like clothes, but I've realized, you know, I have a ton of clothes. I don't need a bunch this year. You know, I don't need a ton. And so it's been very much, um, a mindset shift, you know? So the thing, so backtracking I needed to, I wanted to kind of lay that out yeah. but align your spending with your values what do you care about I'm not asking you to deprive yourself you right. know um, if you say that you value your church and you're not paying your tithe every month or every week or whenever you get paid hmm. what does that mean you know like do you really um, an example I'll, I'll, I'll end with this part the example I like to say and that's really, really where it all starts. Truthfully, I know that there are many things we can do, but this is where it really starts. Um, when we were getting out of debt, I started looking at our bank accounts, our transactions. And before we did all this, I wrote down things I cared about or Hmm. said I cared about. I wrote down, I love a good cup of coffee. Love it. I will go spend money on a good cup of coffee with a friend every week, you know, but um, I said that I valued being at my church. I said that I valued my family. I said that I valued um, books and reading. But what my bank account was showing was that Mm. I valued going to McDonald's because I was lazy that day. Mm. Or it showed that I valued going to a consignment store um, just for fun when I didn't really need to. So the data wasn't lying. You know, it was a gut check. It was a heart check um, because the Bible says where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Mm. So my treasure was in all the things I, I didn't really care about. And so rather than me beating myself up, I really, I I was like, God, please forgive me for Mm. saying that I cared about X, Y, Z, but my bank account showed differently because, you know, we're supposed to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. And that means every part of our being heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's like first commandment, right? So all of it uh, plays with each other. And I didn't really want to like mean to go down that (laughs) far deep into it, but you're good. You're good. That's the, that's the faith in the finance right there. Yes. Yes. I I absolutely love that. Align your spending with your values. And that makes so much sense. I, I teach our church. It's like, if you want to know where your values are, number one, look at your calendar. Number two, look at your checkbook and you will know exactly what you really do care about. That is so good. Um, So what is one thing that somebody can do today that today, uh, today for the next two hours of their day? (laughs) Yes, I would say today. um, And this is the exercise I pretty much have all my clients do first is to make a quick list of the things you care about. And the things you value, because we have to start with the basics. We have to start with the heart stuff. And that's what helps us build those good habits. Mm -hmm. Um, 
because I could come in here and say, tactically do this, 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 and this, and this. But if you don't understand the heart of why any of it matters. Mm, so good. Then, then what is it going to do for you? You know what I mean? At some point, um, and I've been having this conversation a lot. At some point, it's like something in our lives trigger us to commit ourselves to the Lord, to pay off debt, to get a new job. Like at some point, something in our heart pulls us, right? And it's the same thing with our money. You know, it's all so interconnected. It's very holistic. And yes, there are tactical things that we can do. But at the end of the day, you know, the love of money is the root of evil, not Mm. money itself. And so it's like, again, where my treasure is, that's where my heart is too, you know? And so just make a quick list of the things you value. Literally I have, I love a good cup of coffee. It's something I value, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like um, going out to eat once a week because I like trying local places. Those are like, it doesn't have to be, I value saving the world. Like it doesn't have to be something like that. You know, it can be something simple. Yeah. Um, so that's, I would say that's the first thing. And then of course, um, I want you to get on a budget, uh, <laughs> right away. Right. Yeah, yeah. But align it, align that budget with what you value. So I think money's scary enough for people. And right now people are already feeling the pull about it. So if you just sit down and say, what are the things I care about? Yeah. What are the things I'm thankful for right now? And how can I align that with how I do spend my money? So so something good. simple like that. That's so good. Well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on this evening. Thank you for sharing your heart and your mind with us. We, I hope that something was said this evening that made your life better. And once again, um, uh, Adrian's podcast is on anywhere that you can get a podcast, as uh, iTunes or iPodcast or whatever Apple calls it, Spotify, um, <laughs> even the, the No Name podcast that one random person listens to, it's there too. So make sure yes. you go on over there and find her podcast and uh, give it a listen, give it a subscribe, uh, go like her Facebook f- page, uh, Faith in Finance. And once again, Adrian, thank you so much for coming on this evening. And um, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, you have a wonderful evening and um, talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.